Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I've been doing a little bit of work to my 72 Wimbledon White crew cab and I uh, wanted to fill you guys in with uh, the progress I've made and my plan with it so far. So let's go dig into it. Hey guys, well this is my 72 F250 Wimbledon White crew cab I picked up a while back. It was back in uh, June, I believe it was. So it's been a while. Uh, it's been sitting here. I have the wheels off of it. Um, I'm going to use those for another project, so I have them off so I can get them sandblasted and painted. But I uh, wanted to give you a refresher on this truck. Real nice interior. Real complete interior. Headliner's all there. Here's all the goodies I found in it. But uh, really, I really like this truck. I'm kind of a sucker for Wimbledon White. The only thing to make it better if it was a 67, but I'll take a 72 crew cab all day long. Um, all complete, red interior. It does have a little bit of rust under it. So, uh, gotta work on that. Cab mounts and floors, obviously. But uh, my plan with this one, uh, I filled you in a little bit with it, but uh, this truck here, I, I bought it for parts. It's a 97 F350, so it has the Dana 60 front axle. It's got a 460 in it, uh, E4OD transmission, and uh, real clean, real clean, clean frame. So my plan was to uh, stretch this frame 16 inches and put it on this truck because this truck has a completely rotted out frame. It has the uh, the sections that the the plate steel they put on the side of the frames on the 250s and uh, moisture got behind it and it's just eaten away the whole frame bowed, bowed out those uh, plate sections and everything so the frame on this one's junk um, you could fix it but I mean you're pretty much replacing the whole frame trying to fix it so uh, my plan with this one is uh, I'm going to stretch this frame and make it a four wheel drive and uh, originally I was talking about using a 7.3 Ford 7.3 engine the gas engine with a uh, 6R80 or even maybe even the 10 speed and uh, I was hoping that Ford would come out with their control pack but uh, they've been pretty slow to come out with with all that because they're supposed to come out with a computer that control the engine and the transmission and the transmission being a 10 speed um, but now they're talking like it may be next year before it's out so my plan with it now was just to use the 460 and the E4OD and get it on this chassis and get it running and just kind of live with it, you know, with the force, you know, the 460 is not terrible by any means. Uh, and just, you know, not worry about the paint and body work. I'm going to fix the rust on the underside because the cab mounts and everything need to be good for I mount it to the chassis. So I'm going to try to fix the cab mounts and everything and just put it on as is even not, like even this bed, not even, not even paint this bed just to get it a driver so we can drive it around. Um, this bed has some rust in it, so I'm, I am going to fix the rust right there. Got to fix some rust in the floor and one of the cross members. But uh, that is the plan for this thing. So I, I got the bed off of this. It had a flat bed on it. And this is another short bed I have here. And I was uh, seeing how it would fit because my I'm going to mount the bed first. And then I'll know where the body line needs to line up for the cab. So the bed is the first thing that needs to be mounted. And the... Uh, the cross member was hitting the fuel tank there so um my plan with that is to drop the rear fuel tank down several inches and i'm going to have to trim that piece of the frame off to get this bed to sit down flat on the frame but other than that problem right there it was fitting pretty good see it has this drop right here right where the uh, cross member needs to go same with the front i think the levels are all pretty pretty close uh just this one right here where it's hitting the fuel tank is going to be a problem but uh, if I can get it down and set in level, then we'll we'll be uh, in business. But uh, this episode, um, what I think the main meat and potatoes of this episode is going to be, is I need to stretch the frame 16 inches. I'm going to do it right here where the frame is flat. And I have the bed off of here and I took measurements of the frame to know, uh, know what I need. So I think we're going to go to my buddy's shop in uh, uh, over east of here a ways. And uh, we're going to go use his big toys and uh, see if we can make up some frame sections. On the Crew Cab High Boy build we did, uh, we had to stretch the frame exactly 16 inches on that one too. If you remember, he made us some frame sections for that. So uh, 
uh, thought I would bring the cameras this time and uh, show you how we did it. And uh, we'll just cut to his place. So let's go. Hey guys, we're here at my buddy Aaron's place where uh, he's doing some stuff here with some, some pins and stuff. We're getting that taken care of. Then we're going to go bend up some frame rails. But right here, he's got a truck here I wanted to show you since we're here. 69, 69, isn't it? 69. Yeah, 69 F350. Pretty neat truck. Lunar green, one of my favorite colors. It's a pretty nice truck. It's got a flatbed on it. He's refurbishing the flatbed, I think. He's got the dually wheels here all painted up. Looks pretty nice. Got a 360 in it. Is that right? 360? Yeah. Got a DUI distributor on it. Aluminum radiator. Nice old truck. The grill looks nice, too. Did you, did you polish that? No, that's where it came. Nice. Has it had a feed bed on it. Yeah. Uh, cut down the uh, feed bed to where it's only one rail high and redoing it with the uh, wood. Same wood they put in semi-trailers. So oh, yeah. Tougher, be... tougher wood. Yep. That's nice. Redid the brakes? Yes. Cab mounts look good on it. The floor's good on it? Floor's good. I just got that typical rust in the uh, cab corner and the uh, corner of the fender. Yep. Yeah, even, even good trucks have rust in the fender. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a good truck. I just wanted to show you that, guys, since we're here. And uh, we're going to go... Uh, Play with some big machines and cut up some frame rails, I think. Yep. Hey guys, we're here in uh, Aaron's bath shop. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, he makes storm shelters here. That's uh, what he does on his uh, property here, his business. He makes uh, above ground storm shelters, so he's got a lot of sheet metal and stuff. He's got this big break here. We're getting ready to, to uh, cut the, the base metal for the frame rails, and he's doing some test cuts here to get the length and stuff right. And uh, We'll see how that comes out and we'll adjust it as need be for the to get the top and bottom angles just, just perfectly right so he's doing some test cuts here and then we'll uh, get some 16 inch pieces for the pieces we have to make for the extension and, and cut them up then we'll take them to the break You took out this wall. Yeah. Press brake will actually get moved down to where the shear is. Oh yeah. Shear will get moved down and then out just a little bit, and then plasma table will be put in here. Uh, that way we can kind of keep the uh, amount of dust that even with the water table is still producing. Yeah. Just going to start off with the two and a half inch measurement. adjustments as we go. Moment of truth, huh? Yeah, just have to, the the longer it is, the more you have to adjust for it. We can also adjust crown uh, by actually it bows that die. Uh, you know, thickness of it, length really comes into play a lot. But you know, for first guesstimate, I mean that's pretty daggum good. Yeah, I don't think Ford did that good a job. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are a little long. So your measurement was from here to outside, correct? Yes. So I would say we we're right at an eighth. Yeah, that, that's going to throw off Every, your, the, everything. Yeah, so it's you, you got to get this first. Yeah. So we're going to back that off by three sixteenths. on 
two and a Hang half on. now. Okay. So. Seven and a quarter was outside to outside, correct? Yep. Okay. And then we wanted a two inch leg. And so we cut that piece 12 inches long. Uh, pretty much if we cut it uh, 11 inches, it should come out. Bang on. Yeah, because it's inch long. Yep. Okay. Well, let's go uh, cut some pieces. So guys, what we did there is we just did some test pieces with some scrap, make sure we get the angles just right and the, the uh, top and bottom of the frame will turn out this the right dimension. So uh, instead of wasting a big, a bigger piece, you know, we just did some scrap pieces. So now we're gonna go, go cut our 16 inch pieces and we'll we'll use those measurements and uh, everything we just figured up there to bend them up. So uh, uh, we'll get that right the first time on those bigger pieces. You can edit this, right? Yep. <laughs> You're just making it where it adjusts itself and not yes. you don't have to do. It will actually move, it'll do the first off, uh, then it'll move the back gauge, you can spin it around, fold it, it'll go back and you'll be ready for the next one. And we can do that. So, you know, I think we've done ones that have about six or eight different bins before, it's more complicated. Yeah. Stuff. Most of our stuff gets folded in one one side and Uh -oh. That does, yeah, I went the wrong way. <laughs> That's what editing is for. That's why we also filmed an extra one. <laughs> I was just make sure you was on your toes. Now for the real thing. Seven and a quarter wide. 
seven and a quarter. And then we wanted a two inch. Yep. And a two and a quarter. Right. Two and a half. Yep. We're good. One down. So you see it resets itself. It's ready to go back in, do the same thing again. These things make my life a lot easier when they're stretching this frame too because as long as you make a straight cut you put those pieces in there it's exactly the way you need it there's not uh, oh, a yeah. fiddling measure and all that stuff you just cut it and put those in and it's the right length so that's really nice having those exact pieces last like time, that the radius came out almost identical yep. to the factory yep frame yep works good now we got a truck to unload we got tools for that too <laughs> Well guys, it's a little rainy out here today, but I wanted to show you this international we got on the truck here. Uh, Aaron bought this off of us. We bought it for the, uh, it had a, a dump bed on the back, a bed, a hoist for a grain bed. We put that on our uh, 79 F600 factory full wheel drive truck. So we got this truck just for that bed and hoist, but uh, he bought this thing because he's got a crew cab international. I think he needs some stuff for it. But anyway guys, we're going to get this thing unloaded and we're going to head out of here and we're going to go uh, see how those frame rails turned out on the frame. So see you guys back at the shop. So what year is this thing? That is a 71, I believe. 71. Fire truck. Yep. Even has uh, the radiator notched out to where they ran a PTO shaft <laughs> through the radiator to a uh, water pump in the front. So that kills that entire row. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but the other truck has a perfect front end on it. Um, you know, I kind of hate to take away from that patina that it has on it and whatnot but for what i'm going for i, I think i can uh, uh, be happier in the long run by taking care of it. the other fenders don't have any rust in it the cab on yeah. this one is absolutely amazing oh these uh, it's not a one piece front end is it i didn't realize that so this yeah, is with the steel it's, it's yeah fenders and two piece hood yeah huh it's so like the hood on this one just from the vibration it's got some yeah uh, stress cracks and stuff in it the other one over there doesn't this one does fire right up. Um, it was setting inside. Uh, the, um, I still be uh, probably putting a you know 12 valve with the uh, F550 frame off that ambulance. Yeah. There's the plan on airbags. Well, this one's got door handles. That one you just got doesn't have door doesn't handles. Have door <laughs> <laughs> got holes in the roof like every fire truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I'm wanting to get it in and get started on it before I was made any issues. It was made in Canada. Okay. Yep, yeah, International Harvest Company. Huh, that's cool. The Ford crew cabs are all made in Canada too. The, um, kind of looks, you look at them and they're pretty much identical, but then you notice the little bit of difference in the back, the way that the, uh, the cab is made when you look between the two uh, yeah. door and the four door. So the, the rear doors aren't the same? I guess they wouldn't be because they have the... Mm -hmm. Huh. Not exactly Door sure. shut's good. Yeah, the, everything on it uh, closes and opens really nice. You'll notice the back of the cab is shaped different than between the two-door versus the uh, four-door as well. Huh. This would be the donor. That yeah. Front end looks absolutely perfect. Yeah, it does. Nice grill. Nothing's been cut out. Of course, on. the rain helps too. Yes. Makes it looks like you got clear coat on it. <laughs> Patina. Huh? Yeah, that's cut out on that other one. That's interesting. And when they're setting side by side, the back of the cab is, I believe, actually well, is, a little wider. It is it, the rear it, window different. Uh, yes. I was going to say, that, it, it's, that window it's, looks different. It's flared. It's, it's kind of a... You don't notice it until they're sitting side by side. Huh. 
it's pretty interesting that that it would be that much different. Mm -hmm. I haven't researched it to find out what they use those the back doors huh. came from, and also you see how the back leans. Yeah. Back as well. It's. Uh, that is crazy how it's mm -hmm. that much different. I think huh. it will look really nice uh, after everything's said and done with it. Yeah. So so is it, it going to be like a slammed? On no, airbags, I think or? this one's going to be four wheel drive. Four wheel drive on huh? airbags. Yeah. Uh, tuck it up as tight as you can get it. Get it as low as what you can. Uh, probably on 22 and a half inch actual semi wheels instead of turning them down to 22. Even though with the mill, I still want to do a set. Yeah. 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 Well, cool. Well, thanks for showing them. Hey guys, we made it back to the shop here. The frame sections turned out really good. They go up here like this. They're gonna go about like that, and we're gonna change the uh, the wheelbase on this truck from 133 to 149. So we have uh, 16 inches of frame rail there, and see right here where it's nice and straight. That's why where, where I wanted to strength uh, lengthen it out. So uh, we're not changing the up and down of the frame. So if we added it down here where it's at an angle, this would be up higher at the at the final. Uh, you know whenever you add it right here so i add it right here where it's nice and level on the frame so all that stays happy and nice and flat and uh we'll see how it ends up i'm a little worried about uh this jog up here because of the back of the cab is going to be way back here actually it's going to be about right here so um you know the the jog up from the frame the uh the factory uh crew cab frame does the same thing i don't know if i'll be able to show you see it's low down there and then it jogs up and it's flat right here all the way back so it does the same thing it's just a matter of how much um i, I think it'll work out but uh, all that stuff i'll have to figure out once it's once the cab is sitting on the frame i'll be able to adjust the front cab mounts and rear cab mounts so we have some gap right here so it's not hitting the frame right here you can kind of see why i'm doing this see that how it's busted loose that, all that's back in there is rotten, so the frame is rotten out right there, sadly. So, uh, this frame, I would not feel comfortable hauling heavy loads like I want to haul with this truck. So, sadly, this factory frame is not going to be any good. I'm still going to keep it around, though, just in case I need it for something. But, uh, I think the next step we're going to be is uh, get this frame out here and getting it lengthened. So I need to get it cut in half and lengthened, strip everything out of the frame right there where it's gonna be in the way. And also get this in, in here and pull the cab and uh, fix the rust underneath it as far as the cab mounts go. And get that ready to mount on the frame. So uh, you guys are gonna see that sometime in the near future. I wanna get started on this project uh, pretty quick. i uh, got a couple of high boy restoration projects in the shop right now that I'm working on. Uh, once I get the uh, the Harbor Blue Truck, that frame all finished up and uh, ready to go. And if we're waiting on the Blue Truck to get out of paint, the cab and everything, I'll get this thing in the shop and we'll start working on it. So uh, I can't wait for that, guys. Uh, hit the subscribe button so you know when that happens. Hit the like button if you're excited about this crew cab project. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.